Uh, kind of stunning news for anyone expecting to buy a new car. Overwhelming demand for new vehicles will this month push car prices to record highs. That's what industry consultants J.D. Power and LLC predict in their new report out today, which shows the average transaction prices will smash through previous highs to a record $46,259. That's an 11.5% increase from just a year ago. Horrible for car buyers, but great for auto companies if they can match that demand. If the wait list for GM's all-electric Hummer pickup, which I just got up close and personal with about two weeks ago, is any indication, GM, which just last Friday reinstated its quarterly dividend, could be in a sweet spot. But with aggressive EV targets and an iffy economy in play, how will GM reach not only its own capacity goals and keep buyers happy while dealing with materials inflation and the chip shortage? Here to tackle all of that and more is General Motors Chair and CEO Mary Barra, who joins us in a Fox Business exclusive. Welcome. Thanks for being here. Oh, it's great to be here. Let's get to this demand picture. Put aside the EV Hummer for a moment because we're going to get to that because that is so crazy and I just got a chance to see it, as you know. What does demand look like for General Motors across all of your divisions right now? Demand is exceptionally strong. Uh, you know, we have a new uh, Chevrolet Silverado and GMC Sierra uh, version coming out. There's super strong demand for that. Our full-size utilities, our mid-size, but frankly, every vehicle across our brands, uh, it's it's very much in demand. I mean, we've, we've been dealing with, uh, you know, supply challenges, and the customer is very robust from a, from a new vehicle perspective. Well, supply challenges I get with the materials, so mm -hmm. how are you overcoming that, but at the same time, filling the orders because you know how that is if, if a customer wants a car and they can't get it we're hearing of long long wait lines for all cars unfortunately we do have longer waits than we would like but you know i'm so proud of our global purchasing and supply chain and engineering team they scheme almost every week uh, to overcome challenges from a semiconductor perspective or other other supply issues because frankly since the beginning of covid the supply chain has been stretched pretty thin so uh, you know i'm very proud of what we're able to do we're seeing an improvement with semiconductor conductors uh, and that's allowing us to, to make more and more vehicles but demand is still outstripping uh, what we can produce. Well the dividend last yes. Friday you thrilled a lot of investors by reinstating the dividend mm -hmm. came in lower than it had been back mm -hmm. in April of 2020 when you had to suspend it due to this horrible situation with the lockdowns. I am guessing you did not do that without weighing a lot of issues so that you could be really confident that you won't have to go back again and suspend it. How did you model for reinstating the dividend and how did you arrive at the nine cents? Well, as we looked at uh, you know the strength of the business right now, and even though our, our capital allocation is to first reinvest in the business, and we are doing that, we you know between 2020 and 2025 we'll invest more than 35 billion dollars, primarily for electrified vehicles, electrification, and autonomous. And so, as we looked at our plan, but then we also looked at the strength of the business, even with some of the volatility, we felt very. Um, uh, confident uh, in the business plan that we can sustain that dividend but then also we announced share repurchase because that gives us more flexibility yeah. but you know our third pillar after you know we reinvest in the business maintain an investment grade balance sheet is to uh, return value to shareholders. Ford just announced that it is going to lay off 3,000 people is there a chance that General Motors will mirror that move? When we look at their business right now, and, and you know, we went through a transformation at the end of 18 and early 19, and as we look going forward, we, we believe we've got the right the right team at General Motors who is 100% dedicated to our transformation. So we don't see that in uh, in our plans right now. Okay, uh, you know, you were confident enough in January to throw down the gauntlet and say, by 2025, we are going to take over. Tesla. We are going to beat them at their game and uh, overtake the number one position when it comes to EV production. Does that still stand? We believe um, absolutely with the, the uh, portfolio of electric vehicles that we have coming out with different you know uh, forms, whether it's, a, whether it's a truck, whether it's a small crossover, large crossover, the strength of our brands and then our ability from a manufacturing perspective. We've said that by, uh, by 2025 we'll have a million units in North America alone. Can you say 
the point where you believe that the price parity will be hit between electric vehicles, which are awfully expensive right now, and internal combustion cars? Well, you know, there's a lot we're working on to drive scale, and that's something General Motors does really well. As our battery plants come online, you know, we then uh, have better control. We have a strong partnership with uh, LG Energy Solution. And so as we do that, that's going to be an opportunity. The scale that we have from Ultium, because in 2018, we started working on a dedicated EV platform that can scale all the way from a, a, a Equinox, a Chevrolet Equinox, all the way to a super truck like the Hummer or Bright Drop uh, electric uh, light commercial vehicle. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at that scale that we're going to bring, we believe that we can get to parity in the latter part of this decade. Not that the EV Hummer is the metric for General Motors EVs because it's very expensive, but you have a wait list of 80,000. I had this opportunity to get up close and personal with it. Amazing. Uh, and yet it's, it's definitely high end here. How many are you churning out per month to reach that demand so you keep the waitlist people happy? Right. And so, uh, you know, we're working um, and, and the, the battery plant coming online is going to be key because that really unlocks our ability to have more battery cells, to build more Hummers, build more Lyrics, and then all of the EV portfolio. So this is a critical, you know, uh, fourth quarter is going to be a critical quarter for us to scale up. But you're making them right now. So we are making eight, them right now, but it's 12 low, a day. Or? It's it's low volume right now. Um, I think we've made just right right around a thousand um, that we've made so far. But again, as the battery plant comes online, that's going to really unlock uh, um, the ability to make more uh, Hummers as well as Lyrics and our whole portfolio. So this very gutsy push into delivering on the promise about electric vehicles certainly cosmically hits with the uh, Inflation Reduction Act that has now become law. Uh, talk about General Motors and, and your ability to make sure that people who buy these cars can get that $7,500 tax break. Well, you know, we have been working for quite a while. At, at last, uh, our earnings call, we announced that we had secured the supply to make uh, the million uh, EVs in the U.S. or in North America alone by 2025. And with all that we learned from uh, the semiconductor shortage, we really wanted to make sure for our North America supply that we either on short or ally short. So we're very well positioned right now. And, you know, in some cases, we've still got to develop uh, the sources to actually have them, but we have plans to do that. And then I think another important part is the fact that if you look at the uh, the Blazer and the uh, Equinox EV that are those two are coming out next year, those price points right around you know thirty to thirty five thousand, and then just a little over forty, they're well positioned, and those are high volume segments in the market. As we finish up. My dad was a GM guy. He okay. he bought Buicks. <laughs> My dad too. <laughs> yeah, your dad too. Except you're still driving GM. I actually finally went from what I used to drive, which was a Lexus SUV, to a Tesla because I just wanted an EV. This was a couple of years ago. When will you? And it's expensive, even the Model Y. When will you get to sub? Can I just say twenty eight thousand per EV? Well, you know, when we look at what, what we're going to be able to accomplish with the Equinox, I think that's very uh, important because in that thirty dollars to $35,000 range, that's the heart of the market. You know, when you look at how many, it's the biggest segment across the globe of, uh, and a price point that's very attractive. But we have announced that we're also working on an affordable electric vehicle that will be sub-30, and that will be, again, in the latter part of this decade. So, you know, we really want to make sure, one of the things that's General Motors' strength right now is we have a full portfolio of vehicles from very affordable to very luxurious from a Cadillac or high feature from a from a Sierra Denali. And so we're going to continue to have the right portfolio that meets every customer's need for those who buy new vehicles. Our thanks to Mary Barra. What about their autonomous ride hail business? I asked Mary about the revenue GM is banking on when its autonomous taxi division cruise is fully up and running. You've got to hear her assessment on that. We've got it up exclusively on foxbusiness.com. General Motors shares up 2% right now.